Hello, grade 10s. Today we are going to learn how to calculate the gradient or slope of a line segment on the Cartesian plane. Let's revise what we already know about gradients. Line AB has a positive gradient and line CD has a negative gradient. Now let's join Eloise and Rifule as they show us how to calculate the gradient or slope of a line segment on the Cartesian plane. Have a look at this truck and this car driving down a steep slope. Did you see how worried the driver of that car was looking? I don't blame her. Would you feel safe if you saw that sign that said 1 to 5? I've never noticed it before. What does that sign mean? That sign tells us how steep the road is. Really? Then how steep is it? Well, let's have a look. The sign gave a ratio of 1 to 5. It means that for every 1 meter we go down, we go 5 meters across. I just hope that truck had good brakes. I suppose you are wondering what steep heels have to do with maths. Well, today we are going to look at the steepness of lines on the Cartesian plane. But before we do that, I would like to investigate a few interesting slopes. Have a look at these. You won't see any of these signs on the road. Let me show you why. This sign says that the slope is 1 to 0. How steep do you think the line would be? The ratio tells us that we would go down one unit and we move zero units across. This would be a cliff. No car could drive down the side of the cliff. This sign says the gradient is zero to one. This means that we go down zero units for every one unit across. This kind of slope is no slope at all. It's just flat. What about a slope of 1 to 1? For every 1 meter you go down, you move the same distance horizontally or across. Now we are ready to look at the gradient of a line on the Cartesian plane. To begin with, we focus on the axes. On the x-axis, the x-values are increasing from left to right. Similarly, the y-values are increasing from the bottom to the top. In the Cartesian plane, a slope is uphill when the y-values increase as the x-values increase. In other words, as x gets bigger, y also gets bigger. This will be the same as going uphill from the left to the right. The slope of an uphill is positive. A slope is downhill when the y values decrease as the x values increase. The gradient of a downhill is negative. This is an important thing to remember. An uphill has a positive gradient and a downhill has a negative gradient. We are also interested in the steepness of a line or the gradient of a line. We need to know how many units to go up or down and how many to go across. Rafilwe, where do you think we should start? Let me see. I think the best place to start is with two points. You are quite right. Let's start with the two points A and B. The coordinates of A will be 1, 2, and the coordinates of B will be 5, 3. And let's join them to form the line segment AB, because we are talking about lines, right? Now let's look at this line segment. We can see that as we move from left to right, the Y values increase. What we need to work out is by how much the Y values increase. What do you think the increase is, Rafilwe? Hmm, the y value at A is 2 and uh, the y value at B is 3. So the difference will be 1 unit up the y-axis. So I guess this is just 1. Now that we know how much the y values have changed, we must calculate the difference in the x values. Okay, so the x value at A is 1 and the x value at B is 5. 
So the difference will be four. Yes, a difference of four is a distance of four units on the Cartesian plane. It is this distance here between one and five. But how do you plan to write it down? Hmm, I didn't think of that. But I suppose we could write it like the slopes on the signs, like one to four. Yes, but let me show you another way to write this. When you write one to four, it is the same as one over four or one divided by four. So you can also say that the numerator or the top number is the vertical distance and the denominator or the bottom number is the horizontal distance. That sounds complicated. Could you show me that again? Sure. We can say that the vertical distance is the difference between the y values and the horizontal distance is the difference between the x values. Which means that the gradient is the difference in the y values divided by the differences in the x values. Difference means to subtract, right? Exactly. So the gradient is the second y value minus the first y value divided by the second x value minus the first x value. So the gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Good. Now we have a way to write our answer down for the gradient of the line joining the points A and B. If we label the points, then using the formula we found and then substitute, the gradient will be 3 minus 2 divided by 5 minus 1. So the gradient is 1 divided by 4. You also notice that the gradient is positive, so the line segment must be uphill. Now, there is a short way of indicating the words the gradient of the line segment AB. We write M with a little AB next to it. So M of line AB is 1 divided by 4. There we go. We have a way to write down the gradient of any line segment. Can I make a guess about something here? Will a downhill line segment like this one have a negative gradient? Absolutely right. The gradient of PQ, which I can write as M of PQ, will be negative. If you work this one out, starting with Q's values, you will get negative 1 minus 1 divided by 3 minus negative 1. So that is negative 2 over 4, which is negative a half. The line segment has a negative gradient, so it is downhill if you look at it from left to right. There is one last question we need to consider today. Is the gradient the same for the whole line? I think so. Um, yes, the gradient is the same. You are correct. The reason a line segment is straight is because the gradient or slope is constant. That means it stays the same. Now that we've been reminded how to calculate the gradients, let's have a look at some special cases. It is important to know that the gradient of a horizontal line, such as PQ, is always zero. And the gradient of a vertical line, such as RS, is undefined. Let's see if this is actually true by calculating the gradients of PQ and RS. The coordinates for point P are negative 4 and 3, and the coordinates for Q are 4 and 3. The gradient for PQ equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We substitute the coordinates and get 3 minus 3 over 4 minus negative 4 which is zero. R is six and five, and point S is six and negative three. By using the same gradient formula and substituting in the coordinates of R and S, we get negative three minus five over six minus six. 
the denominator has a value of zero, making the gradient undefined. This is always true for horizontal and vertical lines. It was good having you with us, grade 10s. Try out some of the tasks for this section in the Introducing Analytical Geometry task video. We're here to help you to get good gradients.